few safe. So we're taking a few seconds to wait and make sure that everyone can hear us, that the sound is good. And if the sound is good, we'll just start. It's good? The sound is good? Yeah. It's good? Yeah. The sound is great. Awesome. Liam! Hey guys! So fucking great. We finally have Liam in house. It's been long enough. I mean, it's been... God, it's been... I think almost more than two years since I last showed up on a stream. Yes. Because I showed up with the... Uh, the uh when uh, yeah, Renard yeah. was here last yes that's correct so that was april 2019 i believe yeah yeah yeah, yeah 19 yeah. so so two more than two and a half years since i've last shown up more than a, a year and a half since you came to the office something like that yeah but and i'm well, finally back yeah. hello how's it going everyone yeah. <laughs> so yeah liam has been here with us for the better part of the past three weeks um mm -hmm. working on a lot of stuff it's been great. It's been a fantastic time. I can genuinely tell you that what Marco and Liam has, have been working on uh, for Exalters is just fantastic. Um, I won't tease too much because I've already done enough, but these guys are just getting better and better as, um, as they go through the, the roadmap. And I'm very, very proud of what they've been achieving. Thanks. You're just going to make me blush in front of all the viewers, right? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. So. I, I need to bring up some points before we start, um, just to, to make some announcements. So the first thing is, unfortunately, tonight we won't be doing sketches. Uh, we've had some technical issues, so we'll be reporting the, the sketching stream to somewhere in the next two or three weeks. So you can expect us to be, make a live fully dedicated to that, where we'll hang out with you and Marco will be sketching for the limited edition of the art books. We're very sorry for that, but that's out of our hands. Um, as I said, Exalter's, te Exalter's text is almost finished and we can safely, safely say that the book will be released in October. I won't give a specific release date because uh, we still have some th stuff to, you know, tidy up, but it's coming and will be really close to the normal release date. And finally, that's the, the worst news I can bring up to you today, but we need to talk about the art books. Um, very briefly, the situation with the art books has been more complicated than we expected it to be. Um, the usual um, print partner that we, we go with um, cannot print the books as we wanted them to be, which is a landscape format and, and let's say like an oversized book. So we are currently looking for a different partner. This is taking a bit of time uh, and this will obviously impact the release date. We're very sorry for that. It's basically something we have no uh, impact on and we're trying to fix that uh, as fast as possible. When we have proper information about uh, release date and um, the way it's going to look like and everything, we'll make sure to make a newsletter for you guys and to talk about it either on Discord or on stream. So these things being out of the way, now we can actually talk. I mean, the, uh, the mitigating factor for the, the art books is, um, so obviously I don't get involved with all the uh, visual stuff. I just handle making the text as good as it can be. But I have seen the art books. Um, they're all 100% done. They've been 100% completed and they look absolutely incredible. I mean, just the, the, it's just a flood of awesome images just pouring out of the pages and just slamming into you. It's great. Yeah, basically it's a thousand illustrations yeah, yeah. just put together in two books. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually increased the size of the books because they were too small for everything that we wanted to put into it. So we went from 304 pages to 328 pages. So you get 44 more pages um, for your box. Uh, but yeah, that's things that happen, production problems. We will keep you informed, but we're very excited about it. They, they look great. Mm -hmm. I think Marco, Yerji, have been doing a fantastic work at layouting them and preparing them. Some of you who've been donating uh, might have seen what the inside of the books actually look like and you're free to share your feedback with the rest of the community to hype them up. 
um, those who want to be able to have access to these kind of things, you just have to donate one time through the roadmap, even something as low as one euro, and you'll get access to a shit ton of new content and exclusive content via a newsletter. Mm -hmm. But that's out of the way. Out of the way. So can we talk about the latest release? Of course. Lex fucking Talionis. <laughs> so I, I must say personally, I really love the adventure just because it's such a... It cuts through all the through everything. It's just like a straight to the point adventure mm -hmm, that makes mm -hmm. the the players essential key players basically of what's going on. There's no there's no one trying to take agency away from them. Mm -hmm. They have all the power they can have, mm -hmm. but they are faced with a lot of adversity. Of course, yeah, yeah. How was it like for you to write this adventure with Marco? Um, it was uh, an interesting and extended process. So what happened, we, we started out with a basic outline that we blocked out um, quite early. And then over the course of uh, a few months while we were working on other projects, um, we kept coming back to it and we were like, mm, core idea is good. We like the idea of the prisoner transfer from, uh, from Justician to Ignatz. That's cool, but it needs something else. So we ended up uh, throwing the outline out in a sense and coming up with something new uh, i think uh, the one that got actually pushed and we actually started writing was the third uh, draft for lex and that ended up working out really well because that sort of extended time for it to sort of digest and develop uh, ended up kind of refining all of the core points of the adventure i mean really early on we identified that xeno is just the important part the entire adventure needs to focus on who this guy is so we went, we actually ended up like the drafts kind of revolved around who is this guy. Yeah. Um, and we, we refined him more and came up with what, what's going on with that. Um, and then we got to writing it and, um, it went the writing overall went pretty smooth, but we ended up, um, about, I think halfway into the writing of act two, we, we just got suddenly hit with the realization we are careening at the page limit that we can handle um, faster than an armored carriage running through a herd of goats. <laughs> so we needed to develop solutions to that. And then that ended up spinning out all the way into being, um, all the way into being what became the rotten few, yeah. um, which I think turned out to be a really, I mean, it was a positive outcome to a, a situation, a limitation that we had. So yeah, it was good. Yeah. I think switching to, I mean, deciding to extend one booklet into a booklet that is kind of smaller, mm -hmm. but still contains a lot of information that is adjacent to the actual adventure. It's not, it's not like just an extension of the adventure to another booklet because you don't have enough room. It's just like, okay, the adventure actually fits in one booklet and the second booklet is something that just gives you extra knowledge yeah, about yeah. what's going on. And that makes it like, kind of interesting like it's something you've never done we've never done before even when we did new monster we just stayed into like the realm of what's actually like pretty decent we we mm -hmm. do some we uh, do a full booklet and then we add maps on top of that but that's for the first time that we actually go and be like okay maybe we can do a proper extension that goes side by side mm -hmm. with the actual product what do you think about the rotten few i think they're super cool um i'm only slightly biased by that of course um i think it's um it's a really useful tool in a lot of ways uh, even in the context of the adventure it's super important because it's this is your these are your like big faces for you know events that go on during the adventure um and it c contains a lot of the uh, the plans and stuff that that go on um but then it also gives you a lot of wiggle room outside of the adventure it gives you tons of lore about the stuff that goes on with the rotten few and who who Zeno is and stuff like that. Um, it gives you some like a ready-made team of high-level NPCs, whether you're enemies or friends, <clears throat> that can just be kind of you know worked into things. That they have like really defined characters that mm -hmm. are really good. They've got their stat lines. They've got their backgrounds and stuff. Um, and they've they've got like their their cool links and motivations into the rest of the story. Um, and then I think just having that as a booklet is uh, is really useful, yeah. um, like on its own. Yeah, I really like what 
um, what the Rodent view as a booklet adds to, to Lexter Luna is just because it allows you to, to take a tangent on what Lex Talionis is about. Mm. So obvi obviously Lex Talionis is an adventure. It, it tells you how to run it, what happens, and basically everything that entails the, the journey from Justician to Ignatz. What I like about the Rodan view is, as I said, it takes a tangent and it, it's like, okay, here's the entire background mm. about what's mm. going on. You have the history of what has been one of the most secretive uh, rank in all of the ranks that we have in the Genesis, I think the Acheron as R1, maybe with the Arianoi, of the most secretive ranks. And Rotten Few allows you to just have a lot of backstory about what's, what it is, how to play them, to understand their motivation, and also put them back into the context of the Adriatic War and like how they came to exist, mm. to be brought back to life, and to serve as basically the the black hand of god like the the, the dark the, yeah. the dark face of the anabaptist mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and for for the first time we see the anabaptist as this kind of like corrupted force that is not just all for their religious righteousness but they're also acting on purely primal instincts yeah and there's a lot of really cool development that goes in there about how they came to be and it sets up a lot of things that can be really interesting to explore Hi Marco in the chat. Hi Marco in the other room. How are you doing? Um, Marco uh, is having a good time. I'm definitely. I'm, I refuse to touch a vodka bottle today. Um, there was an incident uh, the last week. Incident. The incident. It's like the fatum. It's like it's not a fatum. It's the fatum. It's not an incident. It's the incident. There was an incident. I'm not touching up today. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're talking about the Rotten Few. We're talking about the Rotten Few. And the fact that they're, they're like such a big element of what makes Zeno, Zeno. Mm, mm. And I, I want to bring up the thing that I, I, I discussed with Marco and Liam uh, when the Rotten Few were created. And they, they shared the manuscript with me and I was like, that's very funny because the, the Rotten Few as a group has a long storyline, which means that if you want to play them, you can either place them as, as a group of PCs. You can say, okay, my PCs are going to be those guys. They're going to be the, the team surrounding this very powerful Acheron. So my, thing, my thought process was like, okay, that's super cool because that gives us a, a group of high, very high-profile guys and ladies that are going through seriously fucked up stuff mm -hmm. um, through the worst period of time <clears throat> in time. And you can play them. And then my second thought was, you can actually make something up so that players can discover the Rodden View very early on. Because if you go through the Rodden View as a booklet, you can, you can see that they're located near Lucatore with um, the Rust Falcons when, uh, when everything goes, goes wrong with Barghast and everything. And there's a way for you to just introduce your characters to the Ross Falcons and by extensions to the Rodden Few, which means that you are introduced to them like years ahead of Zeno being mm, captured mm. and then being trying to escape. That gives you so much um, narrative power to, to introduce them so far back in the timeline and to bring them back when your players don't expect them. It makes me think of what Eric, uh, Impossible, did with one of his, his uh, NPCs, an apocalyptic, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was killed or imprisoned rather, and then appeared again <coughs> much later in the campaign, like I think 50 sessions later in the campaign. I think this is exactly the kind of thing that makes a game extremely powerful. And the fact that those tools exist in official supplements make me ver makes me very, very happy. Yeah. Um, actually, there is a question out of uh, uh, Vince. So. His tattoos aren't used as elements in the scenario because it's not part of the plot. Like the, the fact that he has these tattoos as a as kind of a time bomb that's set up for a later sort of, you know, it's either like the reason for um, Cat City to want him back, or it's a reason for someone else to come after him or something like that. Um, the plot, like, the plot is very straightforward in as much as it's got one thing that's going on, and the tattoos just didn't 
come into it. They were they were like a really cool element for him, um, and they're a really interesting like meta plot sort of. Um, it's like the first piece of a puzzle that you can uh, that you can start to put together um, if you start digging into what they are, but it just doesn't deal like it doesn't interact with the actual plot of the adventure. Yeah, I think it, I think the um, the tattoos or let's say um, Zeno's skin in general, mm. uh, if we were to call that as an item, have value if you manage to get rid of Zeno. But getting rid of getting rid of Zeno is not something that you want to happen in the adventure because the goal is to give them give him to the Anabaptist. But since players exist and adventures exist, anything can happen. This is why the Rotom Few exists to give you the power to to play if Zeno manages to escape, if the players decide to side with him for whatever reason, or if one of the players is actually loyal to Zeno and backstab everyone else to make him um, escape. So that gives you a lot of agency to make Zeno the main antagonist or maybe even ally of an entire campaign. So what happens when you have this guy who has basically the entire, a good part of the meta plot of the Genesis tattooed on his back, um, set free what happens you try to chase him but who wants to chase him the anabaptist the chroniclers because the chroniclers are also super interested into what these guys know this is exactly why the judges don't want the chroniclers to know about that so not using that as a MacGuffin in inside the adventure is actually a good thing because it makes him it makes it more interesting on the long term during the the during the transfer let's say Players don't have the time to actually go and ask about what are your tattoos about. They're fo so focused on something completely different, which is their own survival and making sure that they can deliver the package where it has to be delivered. This is something completely... Like, you, you cannot mistake the, the two together. It's like two completely different objectives. So I think it's important to not make it everything about the meta plot and, like, overshoot all the time. I do think the uh, the adventure does an interesting job, uh, if I do say so myself, of um, kind of a pathway into the higher levels. Um, once you like, this is kind of like where a group that's been kicking about in justition for a little while and making a little bit of waves, then finds their opportunity to kind of push themselves a little higher up. They start getting like, they, you know, there's some names from Moloch that show up. Yeah. Um, they get into the orbit of some of the, the bigger the bigger events that are going on in, in the protectorate and stuff like that. Um, and they're not they're not in there, yeah. but they're approaching it and it's kind of giving them that momentum to sort of go into that bubble um, and see what's going on. And you don't actually get any name. Like you don't know that like Naraka is involved, that Rudgar is involved. You just you just fight with their henchmen. Mm -hmm. Which is something I found very interesting because it's it, remi it reminds me of like all the movies where you just start fighting the henchmen before you actually encounter anyone. Mm. And, and this is like the perfect way for people, to, players to not immediately get involved with like, oh yeah, I'm going to meet Rudgar and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk with him, like he's my best pal. But actually you have to do stuff that are kind of related to what he tries to achieve, which is basically in this case getting back Kargonog who fucked up with him in the past. Um, and you don't actually deal with him as if he's your bestie and like you've known him for like 25 years. He's still like the chief protector and he's like one of the senators. He's a big guy. Um, so I, I just saw someone asking if there will be no, uh, in, uh, more about Kargonog in the future. I think he's touched uh, about like in yeah, the writer's Yeah, I mean, he has, his, he, has his most wanted, uh, he has his most wanted entry in um, The Righteous Fist. Yep. And there's a, a exploration of why He's on that list in uh, the other TRF. Um, yeah. In the <laughs> <Rome. laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a lot about him, but a lot of the, uh, I mean, you know, there's there's lots going on. There's lots to develop that could be developed, but uh, who knows what will happen. That's true. Um, I'm going to... I feel like there's some nepotism in Renar saying if he has a most wanted entry, he's important. <laughs> but I'm not going to comment on it. Carry on. I mean, Mopertry is also a cool character. <laughs> I um, no, I, I was just about to say like we've never actually had the, the opportunity. Yeah. To talk have, about we have some spe special fancy things here to show off. So let's start with the uh, new monsters. Of course. So you guys know that during the summer, 
new monsters actually became a thing. Uh, we released it digitally and we also received it physically. Um, it's, I'm really happy with this product just because it's the first time that we decided to do something that is not a limited edition, but has two different types of products. Um, in that very specific case, we get a booklet and anyone that buys him, buys it can get the map of Nupelia with it. I think it was, it was very interesting to develop that. I want to sh give a big shout out to Stefan um, Brand because all of his maps are absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. You absolutely. should get your hands on them as, as fast as you can. So you'll, get so you'll have some in Pnum Answers and if that's not enough, and I hope for you that it's not enough, you'll get more of them if you buy Lex Talionis because you'll get two maps in the, the bundles. That's something we are very, very happy with. His work has been incredible and you'll see more of it in Cathedral City. I mean, you can actually already see it if you go on the website in the map section. The, yeah. the map for Cathedral City is already there. So big thank you for Stefan. So Pneuma Answers has been released for about two months now. Mm -hmm. I think it's been very well received. Um, can you can you share something with us about like how it felt to work on like the intricate, oh, very mechanical aspect of this clan? Um, well, I mean, it was a great time for me. I mean, it was it was quite something just to to be on the same credits page as Chris, like Chris Gunther. I mean, you know, I started reading these books and it was him writing them. And then now it's it's me on there as well, so that's pretty crazy. Um, but it was really it was a really fun book to work on. Um, I had a lot of fun with the um, all the the underground stuff and all the the ranks and stuff like that. But that's just because you know I just gravitate towards the engineer ones because of of course. Um, but no, they they they're a really cool clan. I really love the the sort of their story of like breaking out of their their. They're, they're a really new clan, and they're super powerful, but at the same time, they have no clue what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and they're kind of struggling to work out what to do in this world and how to negotiate with people, how to do diplomacy like normal people, rather than just <laughs> show up with some pneumo hammers and get the job done. <laughs> um, they're, they're really cool. They have cool designs. Um, awesome. I'm super into the clan. I had a great time writing it, writing for it, and it was really great to have all of the, uh, you know, Chris coming back to work on this, and uh, it's been great having Chris come back to work on Exalters, which is coming up. Yeah, and not just Exalters, he's working on Cathedral City right now. Yeah, Chris is working on Cathedral City, which okay. is also going to be super hype. <laughs> the War Chariot. <laughs> I have I have to bring that up because that's something I find amazing. The war chariots are incredible. I really love them. I love the idea of just like this old, very, very, and almost like ancient vehicle coming back from the dead, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to be like drove through um, through Nupilia <laughs> by a band of <laughs> of new boys. Of course, yeah. I mean, it's super like it's such a um, it fits perfectly, kind of this sort of. You know, it's it's a rolling steam engine, like the the original vehicles. You know, like mega high torque, super specialized, like they're powerful, powerful stuff. Um, and uh, it it just fits. It's perfect. I really love them. And of course, the the illustration for them is just badass as hell. All you guys saying the what? Have you not read New It's in the uh, it's in the equipment section. It's extremely disappointing. Um, you guys do know that we can we can take questions, so please shoot the questions. We'll keep talking. I mean, if it's not a spoiler, I'll just uh, I'll just hold up. The, it's absolutely uh, not a spoiler. It's part of a book that's yeah. been released for more than two months. There there's go. no like there's no spoiler protection at this point. I mean, mm, fair, but and so yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, the gorilla. Where is the gorilla? So. After Pneum Monsters got released, like a few weeks later, we received what was to me one of the most exciting things we've done. So I'm very proud of what we've done with VOV. It, it, was, it was a big and very long production um, process to find the right material, to find how we want the, the books to look, the feeling we want for the, the box, uh, making the, sure the dice look good. All of this was a lot of, um, was a lot of work. But recently, 
uh, when we did the very first uh, live this year, we, we announced the limited editions uh, for the Genesis Rebirth. And I'm very, very happy to say that they look even better than I expected them to look like. So we have the three of them on the table. Uh, I'll give them to Liam so that he can showcase them to you. But if you haven't had the opportunity to get them, just please take the time and try to get them because they look absolutely fantastic. They'll be a fantastic addition to your bookshelves. Um, and they'll be gone pretty soon. So you don't want to miss out on that. Uh, I don't like to play on fear of missing out too much, but I, I really think that it would be a, a shame to not get your hands on those products. They look fantastic. I am in love with them. Uh, so the, the stealth edition, for example, glows in the dark. We've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so cool. I'm, I'm like a kid, <laughs> like glowing in the dark. It's just fantastic. Um, and then the Discord edition. Yeah. Course. I think that's your favorite, Liam. I, I am in love with the Discord edition. That's my absolute favorite. I mean, the stealth is cool. The honor is super slick and really pretty, but I just can't get over the... Oh, look at that black. Of hey, course, the, the black. The black gilded edges. I don't, know if we, I don't know if we'll show it glow. I don't think the cameras pick it up super well. No. But it does, we promise. Um, but the Discord edition with, uh, with Trigla and Eidolon on the front, I can't get over just how epic they look. It's definitely the, uh, the ones that I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking home a Discord edition when I, when I go home tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. Which, um, I'm gonna have to work out how to pack it in my luggage, because I was pretty close to the, the limit, but... You just leave some, some clothes behind. <laughs> I don't need them anyway. You don't need clothes when you have a Discord edition. Of course, no. I mean... Uh, so Theodore asks, what are the stages you go through for creating character for in, from initial research to final, oh, sorry, painting. Sorry, we don't have any, any artists. There's around. no artists on this table. Sorry. I assure you. Um, I can, I guess I can kind of talk about a little bit of the, the conceptual stage. I mean, I don't know. I mean, coming up with a character, you just kind of look for things that are cool. Um, you look for like plot threads that are that are sort of available. You look at what's going on in the area. You look for how does this, how does where does someone sensibly fit into this picture, and then you find the person that fits there and you, you write them. I I really don't have much of a method or anything. I'm afraid. Um, so it's a little bit of a up in the air, and I absolutely don't have a any concept of how to paint them because i swear to god if i ever put pen to paper for painting well stick I mean, figures it would be uh it would be a wild ride <laughs> just wear everything i have and make room for the books honestly i think i probably will have to but let's not let's I, i'll work that on and that problem tomorrow um liam did you ever picture yourself writing and editing for such a project as the Genesis? And how do you feel about that today? Um, so I'll start, I'll start with the first half. Um, did I ever picture myself writing and editing for such a project? Absolutely not. No way in hell. Um, so the, until, um, I, I mean, I'm sure everyone in this point has probably heard the way I got into Genesis with, um, yeah, the talk about that. stuff. Um, so what happened essentially was I was going through my university. Uh, I went for a stick figure Saturday. Oh my God. Um, so I was going through university. Uh, I went to the university to be an engineer, um, which is probably about as far away from, uh, <clears throat> as far away from um, writing creatively as you can get. Um, and uh, I sort of, fell into the orbit of Degenesis. I found the books, I got the PDFs, I fell in love with them. I got the Rebirth Edition. I just absolutely died over that. Um, and then I ended up getting, uh, back when it was the, uh, the Jahamid's bundle or something, yeah. um, where it was all the, all the adventure books. Um, and then sometime later I ended up finding the community and I discovered the, uh, the Atlas project run by Erwan, which was a community, a community compendium of uh, NPCs and stuff um, that was being translated to English. I offered up my aid because I'm a native English speaker. 
and, and uh, the translation was shit. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> we can, we can, I think shit is an understatement. I mean, okay, I, I'm not gonna comment, but anyway. <laughs> uh, and then things kind of tumbled from there, and now I'm here. Um, you know, I, I started working on <clears throat> Justician because Marco asked in Discord if anyone, or in fact, no, Marco didn't even ask. Marco just said something and I offered. I remember what happened is like, <clears throat> I, so it was, it was three years, almost three years ago at this point. We just had done the, um, the live, the live stream for, uh, where I was, it was an actual play of the Genesis. And so it was like the, the, the second half of the SMV actual play. And I remember Marco <clears throat> saying to me, okay, if you could have a team of people you would want to work on the Genesis with, who would you bring to the table? I was like, oh, Jesus, fuck. And he gave me like a bunch of um, position to fill, like, yeah, like editor, um, like communication people, rules people and everything. And I was like, editor, editor, yeah. And a few months ago, Marco was like, if you want to finish the Atlas project, you need someone that can take care of your thing. So I thought of you. And then I was like, yeah, if I need an editor, I want, I want Liam to take over this position. So I did my list and I was like, okay, I want Liam for the e editing. I want Renard for the rules. And Marco was already like, oh yeah, Renard, and he started working with Renard on Artifacts. Um, and I was like, yeah, Liam is definitely the best, pers the best person. He, he understands the genesis and he's going to make like a kick-ass job at making it like pitch perfect for the English uh, speaking people. So that's that was how I, I remember it going on. And then Justician Artifacts and you guys just kicked it. Yeah, yeah. And then everything, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, it's all uh, <clears throat> gone uphill from there. Yeah, <laughs> you stepped up. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been, um, I would, uh, I think I've improved a lot just from uh, from when I started, just from going through it all. Um, but I'm just uh, doing the best I can. And then what ended up happening is, um, I think uh, during Artifacts, I ended up putting, starting writing um, on, on stuff. Um, and then that sort of sat around for a while and then I just kind of uh, sprung harm's way on you guys and yeah. now it's kind of turned into more of a more of a you know I actually, that's actually what I'm doing that was wild I remember I remember the day when you when you just like dropped harm's way on us and it was like oh yeah <laughs> I mean just very casually I, I worked on that in my free time um, have a look at it guys and <laughs> Marco and I were like, what the fuck? You wrote a full adventure by himself? This piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, Justician had been released for a few weeks and we were wondering what we were going to do after that. And it was like, okay, I guess we have to publish that now. <laughs> like, there's no, there's just no way around it. All right, guys, he's, uh, he's arms away. I mean, the, the original concept, like I, I was going to... Uh... I was gonna release it as just a, a fan-made thing. Like I was, I was just doing it as a, you know, I'm gonna do this because I, I thought the idea was cool and I thought I'd do it as a, oh well, you know, I'm just gonna do this because while being an editor, I'm also a fan. Yeah. And I haven't done like since Artifacts, I hadn't done like full writing, but I'll show it off to Marco and Erwin first so they can give me some thoughts on it, and then, well, it ended up being a thing. Yeah, um, that was wild. <laughs> that was wild. <laughs> That, I think that that's really what um, kickstarted the entire idea of doing the roadmap because we're like, okay, if Liam can actually pull that off in a f short time, then the roadmap can exist. I mean, then there's there's room somewhere for booklets that can actually be read very quickly but produced also very quickly. Yeah, and it turned out really well. I mean, the the production quality on the uh, on the booklets is insane. I mean, they're so so nice to just yeah. hold. And they are really, you know, sturdy. They're substantial. They're not just like magazine type paper things that you could rip. Like, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to try it, but you'd probably struggle to rip these booklets. Probably, yeah. I, I refuse <laughs> to try it and I will despise anyone who does. But anyway. No, I don't want to try that. But yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, it, was, it was very interesting to, to see that as an opportunity. Like, it, it was really surprising for both Marco and I. And, uh, and I really vividly remember the moment where, like, okay, there, there's room for something, especially when we received the, the printed version of Arms Way. Um, it became obvious that it was something to do. Um, 
Thank so you. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll also answer the the second half of the question about how I feel writing and editing for the Genesis. It's really it's an incredible experience. Um, it's unexpected. It's a complete one thing that always kept me sort of going with it. Whenever I was you know doing um, engineering and coursework and whatever and getting completely bogged down in it, it's a complete shift away from that so even when i was working hard on this it was still like stress relief um and then at the same time it's you know i'm creating something i'm helping to create something because i mean i'm not going to write off marco um i'm helping to create something that really is incredible um it's a really incredible world the aesthetics incredible the visuals are incredible so i'm happy to help try and make the writing incredible in whatever way i can Let's also give a shout out to Ricardo. Of course, for the absolutely. Work. Ricardo has been <clears throat> out of this world. I mean, what a guy. Yeah, <laughs> really great job on, uh, on Lex Talionis. And <clears throat> I think you guys will enjoy the pieces he's painted oh, for absolutely. Exalters. The, the pieces he's painted for Exalters are pretty incredible. I mean, yeah, just yeah. the, uh, like, just wow, eye-catching. I think we can talk about another artist that's been working on Cathedral City. Of course. Someone that you guys, you know his work. He's, he's done most, I mean, he's done all of the illustrations in the writer's fist. Uh, and I'm obviously talking about Chris Kintner. And I think, Andy, you can bring up the illustrations that Chris has been working on um, while we were working on Lex Talionis. You'll see them on screen in a few seconds. Um, I think you guys will really like what Chris has been working on. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of pieces coming your way. This is Cairo City is just gonna look absolutely fucking amazing. I'm super super excited for it. I mean, the, it's it's really gonna be a a big sort of hub for lots of things going on. We're gonna have a lot of super cool stuff in there, um, and of course, having Chris back to do illustrations and stuff that's really great. I mean, Ricardo, awesome. Chris, also awesome. We're just going to bring everyone together. It's going to be super duper awesome. It's more awesome than more that. awesome than awesome. Oh, I'm very happy to see all the reaction in the chat. You guys are killing it. Awesome. <clears throat> it's fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm jazzed for Cairo City. It's it's such an important city. Of course. In this entire context, and like, I can't wait to see what you, Marco, and Chris are going to. Um, well, both Chris's. Both We've Chris, both yeah, Chris's yeah, Chris on one and Chris two, <laughs> like tall Chris and uh, shy Chris. Of course. No, actually, they both tall and shy. That doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's fantastic. Um, we have some questions we can catch up on, I guess. Yeah. So, Dave, uh, will the setting one hundred percent never touch North America? Yeah, no, it it won't touch North America because we've we've talked about it many times, uh, both in Q and A, written Q and A, vo verbal Q and A. North America is just not part of the setting, um, not because we don't like it, but because it's not part of the setting. It doesn't impact the story that's being told, and like you cannot ex completely keep expanding a world over and over again. Like the fact that it's secluded on Europe and North Africa is just. I mean, the world's gonna expand inwards. Yeah. It's not gonna just expand outwards. The all the plot lines are happening in Europe. All the uh, important um, meta plots in Europe. Um, and as was mentioned in, uh, you know, in Primal Punk and in Moloch, the rest of the world is kind of just fucked. I mean, you've got the asteroids impacting all over the place. You've got huge climate <clears throat> events. It's just, uh, you know, yeah. it's not, it's not going to be touched beyond that. Uh, I, you know, I, I understand the, the rationale of it could create a lot of new fans, but at the same time, it would be creating a lot of new fans for a very shallow reason. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't, you can't get people into the deep questions of the, uh, of the world about, you know, what's going on, um, what's going on, you know, in the more high level. You can't get people interested in that if they're interested in the world just because, ah, it's America, I live there. Yeah, if the only way to get people from North America to like the game is by adding North America to the game, then maybe that's just not a game for them. You know, like you can, if you, if you manage to have empathy for Lord of the Rings, even though it's not about North America, maybe you can have empathy about a lot of other things and this yeah. is part of them. Um, <clears throat> it's just, you know, 
it's creativity and like world building is not just about making it like so everyone can relate like some people will never relate to what digenesis is about i mean at the same time like the it's not as if the europe of 2000 <coughs> of 2595 is particularly similar to the uh, the current one yeah i mean as far as i'm aware there isn't a giant crater where paris used to be probably i mean can you confirm nah, as far as i know my parents are doing all right <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, fair enough on the question, um, but no, the answer is <laughs> unfortunately no. Is there any plan to flash, flesh out <clears throat> every Spaniard or Poland in the near future? Roadmap, roadmap is the way. If the first roadmap succeeds, then we'll expand. Uh, yeah, so roadmap one, obviously, I mean, we want to finish roadmap one first before we start going on to what's going on. But the, the, the sort of the beauty of the roadmap is that we can really clearly just signpost exactly what uh, we're doing. Like, you know, you guys know what we're doing for the next uh, for the next few months until the roadmap is done. Yeah. We've announced what we're doing after, which is Agatapoya. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're getting there and we'll see what happens. And the thing is that, of course, we can expand the entire world, but there's just a case of having enough hands and ma it making sense in the plot to do so um so we w i mean we would really love uh we'd love to expand everywhere um we just need to get to that point yeah it also needs to make sense in terms of the stories you want to tell you know like we are n i mean as far as my understanding goes we will not tell stories just for the sake of telling stories we need to have a way to make those stories significant or at least relatable f to everyone. It's not about like, okay, we're gonna do a story in Ibrispeña, but if there's nothing to say about Ibrispeña right now, it doesn't make sense. If the next right step is to go to Progare or to Poland or even just Eastern Borka, then that's where we will go. It won't be a matter of like, oh yeah, we just because uh, a, re a culture because people from the culture absolutely want that to happen. We'll do, we'll keep doing like consistent stuff until we die, or, you know, like that's what we die do. Die in the, the literal or metaphorical sense. Yeah, because we did gestation. Gestation was a very big and important milestone for us, but it was just not enough. Even as big as it is, it was just not enough to tell everything we had to say about like the product. Right? Mm -hmm. And even, I mean, I won't spoil anything, but even today we had even more conversations about how we could expand on the protector, right? Mm, of course. Like there are more than one way to just talk about a region. And I think it's important for people to be like, okay, be patient. We'll talk about the regions you love the most at some point. Just give us the time. If you keep supporting us, if you make the roadmap successful, if more people join the masses and just help us build forward, you'll get to see whatever it is you want to see. Just bear with us. Please bear with us. So, um, just as a, a heads up, by the way, because I see Faust is reposting a question. We do have a little log of questions, so... We are getting some, it's just that some of these take a while to answer. Yeah. Um, as for any plans for a book similar to Artifact, no. Um, we're, we're, we're done with crunch books just because it's not the way that Marco, Chris, etc. want to expand the, uh, want to expand the, the, the setting, the line. We've done Catharsis, we've done Artifacts, like we've had our crunch. Um, and Your I think own internal that, crunch. I think that um, we we just want to focus on bit world building and cool adventures and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, we're gonna do clan books that have we we can do some experimental mechanics and stuff with like what we did with the Ganarids. Um So we're gonna have some more experimentation there, but there's not gonna be another book that's a rules book. <clears throat> yeah. There's just gonna be more adventures and lore and clan expansions and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess I guess we can. I mean, most of us can agree that what that the strength of the Genesis and the strength of the team around the Genesis is the attention to the world and the world building effort that goes into it. And I think that's way more important than the rules. I won't say that catharsis is a bad system because I actually don't believe that. I think it's a very good system and it does very well what it's supposed to do. But if for whatever reason you want to play the Genesis with any other system, it works. You know, you can play into an inner world with whatever system, but the, the other way around is not true. So I think you 
we need to, I mean, the focus needs to stay on world building the genesis because there are so many ways of making that even better than it already is. And to just keep expanding on what you guys want to see, we, we have heard the many, many requests for the carbon. I know more people want to see Africa. Cairo has been requested a lot of times. Um, people have been hyped when we released Agatopo the when we did the release the for Agatopoia yeah, poster. Yeah. yeah, so we know and we can feel that there is like a need for this world building expansion, and that's what I th at least as far as I, I see, we will be focusing on because we want to just give you guys what you've been requesting. Rules are one thing, but you can always ask rule and share that with the community. That's something that can very easily be shared in like community project you can build whatever subsystem you want for catharsis but even if you decide to take over what the world of the genesis can be about it will i mean and with all due respect it will never be on the level of what marco and chris and liam have in mind for what it can be so that's where we want to go to provide you with with as much exciting material as we can and i think and i hope that with the roadmap the guys have shown you that they're capable of delivering it's on it's on it's and that it's always a fucking success it mm -hmm. gets you excited yeah that's it that's it <laughs> um but thanks for the question um another one just from faustus because i can answer it real quick um how much ammo was expended during ambush exactly 18 shots that's it question done <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, oh fuck Dana, will the timeline always go forward? Yes, um, pretty much. I mean, we've set like we've got the timeline counter set up to twenty five ninety eight with yep. Justition. We've established what's going on there. We're gonna kick around for a while, yeah. and then as uh, I think Marco mentioned in the next in the the last live stream, um, Agatha Poya will be moving. We'll be pushing it forward yep. again, and we're gonna be taking taking forward. Um, um, Ron D was asking anything like Justinian. Anything like Justinian and size for world building. We I'm don't have any not. book called Justinian, sorry. I'm afraid not, sorry. Uh, um, as for but, Justician. But more uh, seriously, um, I think we're, we're set on these roadmap segments now where we pack huge amounts of, uh, huge amounts of uh, content into... <laughs> sorry, I'm just seeing Agra just going mad in the chat. We love you, Victor. We love you. I love you, you Agra. You're doing a great job. It's all good. You'll get it eventually, maybe, if you're lucky. At some point in the future. I saw someone asking also about the triple story. That's the same. Maybe at some point. Well, yeah. I mean, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Uh, so, yeah. Next big world building book. Mm, not anywhere near. The thing... What? All of them. Oh, yeah, of course. All of... Okay, Marco is yelling all of them. Of course, all of them are world building books. If you read any of the adventures you get more information what i mean is like you won't see anything as close as justician in, in size yeah the thing size. is i mean you've got to consider we were working i mean marco especially was working on justician for like three years um i came yeah. in maybe halfway through that but it was a huge project and it took up all of our attention for a huge amount of time yeah whereas what we can do <laughs> what we can do now <laughs> Sorry, I just read like the full caps lock. What we can do now is we can take a more like, it's more like um, where Justician was like a giant nuke going off of world building and just absolutely destroying an entire, an entire area of yeah. just incredible stuff, incredible content, huge amounts of NPCs, Never huge amounts before. of plot hook, all that. Whereas now we've switched over to the precision uh, cruise missiles yeah. where we're, we're drilling in. It's like surgical. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, we'll, we're not going to have anything as big as Justician, but I think we're hoping that overall we're going to have some really cool content for you anyway and, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So there's two things I want to add on top of that. First of all, Agatopoya will be a massive book. It's going to be big. I mean, we're, It's going to be a big a book. It won't be, like, it won't be a booklet. And the second thing is... We, I mean, Six More Vodka as a company hasn't changed that much since the first streams that we've had, like almost a year and a half ago. We're still a small team working on projects that are very ambitious. And so we are trying to get all of that done in the best professional way 
And you guys need to understand that we cannot work on like five projects at the same time, especially when some of those projects are very big books. There, there, there's a way for us to proceed through our production pipeline. And it's like the roadmap is one of them. I got a Poya is another one. And then there's other stuff in the background that we're trying to work on that you guys don't know about. <laughs> I s- fuck, Agora just renamed himself in 18, sh- 18 shots. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Um, so yeah, what I want to say is just like, we're a small team. We're trying to be very focused on what we do to provide you with the best quality. Um, and please just let us know if that's what we've done in the few in the past few months. Like, yeah, I mean, we Marco and I absolutely just adore seeing people enjoying the books and talking about what's in them and stuff. It's really you know a highlight of, I mean, it's a personal highlight for me to just see like uh, Chromo going on about a huge a huge uh, session write up of how um, Last Watch went. I really enjoyed that. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll, we're getting there. Um, I'm just going to go quickly through a couple of ones. Um, Vince, who's writing uh, Mass Grave? It's probably going to be me and Marco, but we'll see what happens. I mean, Marco and I are kind of, we've, we've settled into our sort of uh, team of, uh, we, we work together on things. Um, some parts I write and Marco goes through, some parts Marco writes and I go through, and we end up coming, we end up kind of combining like, you know, or like a Megazord doing some Power Rangers type shit, <laughs> uh, where right. we, uh, you know, we come together and combine to combine our strengths. Um, so that's that's that. Massgrave, probably me and Marco. Chris might be on it. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the best impersonation of your dad ever. <laughs> Liam, which of the new roadmap projects have you enjoyed working on the most? Um, it's really tough to say. Um, dad, honestly. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be really hard pressed to pick one out. Um, Clans of the Frontier doesn't count as a roadmap project, but I really, really like it. Um, I just had a great time on it. The Pictons were super awesome to develop. The Druids were super awesome. The Ganners were super awesome. The Bretoni were super awesome. It's all good. Um, but at the same time, you know, like Last Watch was a super cool adventure. Lex Talionis is a super cool adventure. I really enjoyed the working on Lex Talionis. We kind of, Marco and I came, we, we kind of grooved together really well. Um, and Exalters is just turning out to be incredible. It's really awesome. Um, so I'm having a good time. Um, Dad. <laughs> th- thanks, Dad. <laughs> um, so have we considered hiring more rocket scientists to expand the team? We'll need some when we finally reach the... Baikonur, of course. Baikonur, we'll need like at least a team of like 10 rocket scientists just to make sure it's proper um, rocket let's, science. Um, let's just skip over the next question real quick. Tell, them, tell Obi what the booze is. Oh, the booze. Um, so the booze is uh, Entro Reyes. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Pablo because I think he's the one that's been like telling me for months to just try this booze once. So that's what it is. You can sponsor us. Yeah, if they could sponsor, like, we, we will do more. I really like it. It's super good. Very spicy. So this is an interesting question, and it might take a while, but um, I hope that we can get through a bunch of the, these questions because there's a lot of good ones. Um, so Chris Harbin, not any of ours, um, asks, as writers and tabletop game developers, how do you approach usability when creating such a unique world and system and making it approachable to new players? What hurdles have you had to address? That's a pretty in-depth question. Mm? <laughs> I, uh, I actually, I mean, the way that we've addressed it um, and addressed the usability and stuff, I mean, the harm's way exists now. Um, and I think that's really, um, you know, where we came from with, like, how do we find a route for someone who has no clue what's going on into the game? When I was writing it, I'm like, okay, this is, like, there's no meta plot here. There's no spores. There's no primer. There's no sleeper bullshit. It's just some people doing a thing that's a bit shady, and then they get into trouble along the way. Um, and then, in addition to that, you know, there's the pre-generated characters that come with it. Um, there's the uh, rules cheat sheet we made, which is one page that just sums up all of Catharsis, yeah. like everything in it except like I think the scrap rules didn't make it into the one page, which. I'm sorry, guys, you know, if you... No, it's like the basic... We, we put the basic Karasis rules. Anything you really need to be able to play, like how to roll 
action numbers and yeah, yeah. fights it's, and it's like this is one page that you can give to someone at a convention and that's the game there's no there's nothing about like subsystems basically yeah um so um it's a it's an interesting hurdle i mean we've also like we have such a unique world and we kind of just uh we just uh you know we get into it and we do our thing um and we also have we have done some stuff for new people and i think that's you know the best we can do for now. Um, um, will there be any adventure books serving as a prologue to Agatapoya? No comment. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll see when we get there. Yeah, you'll see what you get for your books. Um, that was, sorry, that was from Pyotr Snosnowski? The Spaddy Fix. Okay. Um, um, would there be cold books like the Spitalian book before the reverse edition i don't think we will go that way just because if we do one we need to do 13 yeah I mean, and then it's just like the never-ending i mean we we had just i mean there was just cult books battalions before but i think you know with how we're we're at now like we couldn't do one without all of them because yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be doing it justice yeah it wouldn't be fair it's like it's the kind of thing like if you go that way then you're just stuck with like that am that x amount of books that you need to do in our case it's 13 books and it's not like we can do these books without illustration because if we could then it would be kind of a an easy job because you, you can just like write x amount of pages oh, yeah, for just write if, about an x amount of pages it's so easy or it's one. just it, but, no but like come on but then <laughs> <laughs> fuck you wow that's just <laughs> wow the snark but then you have to write like X amount of pages and on top do like 20 illustrations to go with the books. That's yeah, what yeah, I meant. Of course, of course. So it's just like, it's just not something you can do easily. <laughs> Fuck you guys. That's crazy. It feels like I'm just like slamming my dick on your faces and be like, oh yeah, your job is so easy. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, wow. <laughs> guess up. Uh, have we ever considered making an adventure around entering the warpage? Um, it's not in the current pipeline because the plot's not going there. Um, but we've thought about stories we about have, people going into the We have stories about people going into the Warpage. Um, they're on the website. Warpage is there. Um, there's plot threads that are there, so you totally could do it. Um, it's a, you know, get, get fucking weird with it. Get super trippy. That's my advice. Um, from Louis. Um, guys, sorry if you already answered. Maybe I've lost it. Do you have any plans, even tiny, for the upcoming Luca comics and games? So we won't be going to this year's edition of Luca, mainly because we're neck deep stuck in the um, roadmap and we don't have enough. If we go to Luca, we just lose like almost two weeks worth of work and, and we just can't do that. We also don't have enough stock to go there. So we are thinking about going there next year. We're also thinking about doing other conventions when they present themselves to us. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes when when the years uh, just like just go on. You know, like we we don't have any big plans. But Luca, I mean, I've never been there, obviously. But Marco keeps telling about how good Luca was in the past, and I think there is. Um, we're all excited to go there if we can. And I've yeah. never been there, but I'm yeah, but sure I, it's a great time. I'd, I'd be very happy to go there, and I think the entire team would be, and if we could even bring the Leon there with us, <laughs> it would be fantastic to meet all the Italian fans. Um, let's see. With all these supplement, with all these smaller supplements and adventures coming out along the roadmap, will you ever consider compiling a number of them into a single art bag book? So, I can't give a definite answer on that it's just you need to understand from our, a logistic point of view we are in downtown berlin we have a limited amount of warehouse space that we can use so if we want to go the outback way we need to make sure that we have enough people buying buying them so that it's viable um maybe at some point in the future we'll do it um i won't say that it hasn't crossed our mind but it'll take a bit of time so get rid of uh, the yeah i mean it's also a case of like if we we've spent you know a year doing our supposedly nine supposedly nine roadmap booklets yeah which is kind of you know well we'll see what we'll see where that goes um and then we immediately say actually all this print that we spent all this time doing we're just going to ditch all of this stuff and we're going to do it as a hardback. 
Like, it would really be a tough... I mean, it, it, it would be like wasting basically nine booklets worth of printing. I mean, it makes sense only if we get rid of the existing stock. Tim, the, and, uh, Tim and I'm talking about how Rotten View exists now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, for, the idea for us is just that we, we went with the idea that we will go with a limited amount of products, a limited amount of editions for each of those. We have a thousand of each product. Um, if, if we get rid of these, then we can think about ways to bundle them in a different ways. But then we first have to get rid of the thousands units um, just to make sure that there's actually people that want that. Mm -hmm. then, then we can think about ways of, exactly as we did with the reverse edition, we can think, so, think about ways to make that exclusive and like uh, collector editions or whatever. So we'll see what happens, we'll but see what happens. wait till we actually finish our roadmap before we start talking about what we do with that afterwards. Yeah, it's the same as a roadmap too. Finish roadmap, roadmap one, and then we'll talk about the second one. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean that's um, Jack asked the question, is the plan going forward that all roadmaps will be kicked off by the launch of some larger book? Well, finish roadmap one and you'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, also, I also want to kindly point out that we are in September, end of September. Uh, we started the roadmap end of, August, uh, end of May. So that was four months ago. And we've released how many booklets so far? One, two, three, four? Yeah, four. So. Uh, we're, uh, Exalters is gonna push us over halfway. So right now we are at roughly one booklet per month. We are producing a lot of content. Just, you know, give us the space to explore like everything we have to, to produce before we, um, we go for like big ass fucking books that are going to take us like six months just to be produced. <laughs> um, modus operandi. Ah, that's a big topic. I know, I know it keeps coming back. I know what you guys want. And I, I would love to be able to say that we are able to produce that. But to be true, I mean, to be completely honest, the way we wanted to do modus operandi changed over the years. We started with the ID4 book and then we moved on to... Modus operandi being like an update for the website, but it's just, if we want to do it the right way, it would, it would take a lot of resources to make sure that it goes down properly. Um, and we don't want to mess that up. Uh, and now I see, okay, it's just, it's just something that we can't mess up because it's a serious, it's a very, very serious book that we want to make. We still have that, in the back of our hands, but um, it's just, you need, you need to bear with us as, as with everything. We need to have the time to be able to produce the content. And if we see that it's worth the invest investment, we will definitely go that way. Um, just give us some time. So yeah, I mean, we'll get there. We'll see what happens. Uh, should we expect Agatopoia to be more like Justician, as in world book and NPC profiles, blah, 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 or it would be more like the trilogy books? Uh, no comment. Bye. <laughs> wow. You'll find out when you get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being a little bit cruel, but we'll see. Um, new, actually... Okay, okay. Uh, don't expect it to be like anything we've done in the past. It's going to be a wild ride. It's going to be different. That's what we'll, that's what we'll go with. Um, new, actually, guess its question. Uh, will there be a Roadmap 1 bundle? I mean, that's, uh, that's just a thing that goes on the, uh, the shop site. Um, what is it about the bundle? It's just if there will be a shop bundle for all the roadmap books. Yeah, it's I mean, going to be the already, booklet bundle. We've already got the booklet bundle. That's the the booklet bundle gets uh, added up. Um, it gets added with every new release. Yeah. Um, and it just uh, keeps you know expanding until we're we're done. Um, um, for Dave regarding the roadmap, so what are the thresholds that define micro? Micro, mega, and monumental donors. It's very simple, actually. Micro is anyone that makes a donation that contributes to a specific book for less than 20 euros, not dollars. Um, no, actually, it's the opposite dollars, not euros. Micro is um, anything between 21 and 50 bucks. And no, between 20 and 49 bucks. Mega is anything between anything above. Um, 50 bucks and monumental is for anyone that has made donation for more than a thousand dollars 
over all the books. We just want to reward those people for like being crazy fucking supporters. So again, micro is for anything under $20, macro for anything under $49, and mega for anything below, be above $50, and monumentals for people that have donated toward the entire roadmap for more than $1,000. Uh, so there's going to be more of them in uh, Exalters, for example. We'll see more names. And thank you to all these people. You guys are just fantastic. Of course. <laughs> Um, Hozon, will we know more about the creature lurking in Venice? You can actually piece this together with what's been published. There you go. Ooh. Um, just, uh, take a look around and see where it's mentioned and you can probably work it out. From Lewis, anything not necessarily on the way that would, you would love to explore in the future? I mean, that's a very wide <clears throat> question, uh, because that encompasses just so many things that could be very interesting to do. If I just speak for myself, um, I would love I would love to do like a very early the Genesis timeline book, something that goes back. Erwin, tell us about how much you want a City Wars book. <laughs> yeah, City Wars oh, book. Wow, City Wars book would be I think 